Let us welcome you to this course on building a Spring MVC application from ground up in 27 steps. Right now, we are building up the exception handling for the application and we are in step 34. So if you want to look at the code at the end of step 34 or at the end of step 33, you can open up this particular readme file. So if you open this up, you can look up what was the code at the end of step 33. And if you are interested in following the entire step in detail along with us, you can download the step33.zip. Once you click and open up the step33.zip, you'd be going to a page where you can click the raw button. If you click the raw button down here, you'd be able to download a zip file. You can install that zip file using the installation guide which is also present in our GitHub repository. The URL to our GitHub repository is in 28 minutes slash Spring MVC step by step. So it's in 28 minutes, Spring MVC step by step. Just go on to that repository. You should find an installation guide which you should be able to use to install the step33.zip and you should be able to get the application up and running within a few minutes in Tomcat without a problem. So if you have that installed, then you would be ready to get started with the step 33, actually step 34, which is exception handling in Spring MVC. Actually, we would be doing this in two different parts. In the first part, we would be discussing the theory behind exception handling. And in the second part, we would be looking at how you can use controller advice to implement generic exception handling and how you can implement specific exception handling using at exception handler in specific controllers. We'll also look at how to use the error page in a web.xml as well. So these are all the things which we would be covering in this particular video. If all this seem confusing, don't worry. Within a half an hour, you'd be able to understand all of them. Good luck. Welcome back. We are now in step 34 and almost three or four steps from the end of this particular course. In the previous step, we learned a lot about Spring security and how it helps us securing a lot of URLs from unauthorized access. In this step, we would learn about exception handling. As far as I am concerned, one of the most important things as far as any application development is concerned is the exception handling. Whenever we do any kind of programming, exceptions are expected. In the real world, the applications run in varied kind of scenarios and it's very very difficult to predict everything about the scenarios in which the real world application run in. What do we mean by good exception handling? From the user perspective, I think the most important thing not throw him a 404 or something of that kind. Show him a really good error page saying something went wrong and also give him an ID so that he can contact the support team with that particular ID. The message to the user can be something of the kind. We are really sorry for the exception. Please use this exception ID when you're talking to the support team or something of that kind. So in terms of exception handling from the user perspective is that we should display him a proper page. And number two is give him something to refer to. So give him an ID so that he can use that ID to talk to the support desk. The important things from the perspective of our support team. So there would be a team who would be supporting the application. And the important things from the support team perspective is given an ID, given 89012, they should be able to easily understand what the user did. So they should be able to go to the log and figure out what's happening. What are the exception details? What kind of thing that the user was doing? So those are the two important things. So a user should be given a clear picture that he faced an error and the support team should have clear idea of what the user has done and also all the details about the exception, including which line through that particular exception. These are the two key features behind any good exception handling system. We would not have time in this particular course to build the entire exception handling system. What we would do in this step is Try and build a basic exception handling for a Spring MVC application. When I started programming 15 years back, the way we used to do exception handling for is in every method. So we used to go around every method and put a try catch around it, add in a exception E. And you can imagine this kind of code being present almost everywhere in every controller, in every data layer, in every business layer, everywhere we used to catch, 
and we used to throw a business layer exception, throw a data layer exception, so uh, throw a controller exception and then the controller would handle that and it would send it to something like an error page. So it would be something like in the exception handling we would log the error so it would be something of this kind. So in the exception handling we would say logger dot log don't really worry about the correctness of this particular syntax but this is the kind of code which we used to write 15 years back when I was new and when there were no frameworks like Spring, Spring MVC and struts. So this is how we used to do a lot of exception handling. Now all these kind of methods are really really outdated. So as far as exception handling is concerned, one of the most important things is the fact that do not handle an exception unless you know what to do with it. I see a lot of applications with a lot of exception handling. All they do is at the end of the exception handling, they still show the same thing to your user. Then why do you really need to worry about exception handling in those scenarios? Have a high level exception handling. Just have a one set of exception handling at the top and apply it to everything. Don't You don't need to really write exception handling code in every method or every class. You don't need to do that anymore. All that you need to do is use the pro web.xml properly and use the controller advice properly so that we would have a high level exception handling. Only reasons why you have to do a specific exception handling in a specific method is when there are business scenarios which is throwing an exception. So let's say there is a service which kind of throws an exception in a business scenario but when that exception is thrown I would want to take the user back not to the error page but I would want to take him to the real page and show a validation error. In that kind of situation it makes sense to implement custom exception handling. In 99% of the scenarios all that we would want to do when an exception is thrown is show the error to the user. So when I'm just showing an error to the user I would use the top level exception handling which is either in web.xml or in the controller advice. You should implement custom exceptions only when you want to do something specific. I mean something more detailed. You want to show a validation error to the user. You would want to handle it as a business condition and not an exception scenario. In those kind of situations it really makes sense to do exception handling. That's a lot of theory I guess. So let's get to the practice. Just an overview of what we would be doing in this step. Exception handling is called a cross-cutting concern because I want to do ex exception handling irrespective of the layer. So whether it's business layer, service layer or even the web layer, you want to do it in everywhere and such kind of concerns are called cross-cutting concerns. The general rule that I was talking about is do not handle exceptions in controllers or service if you can't add value to them. I mean there's no reason why you'd want to handle an exception and just throw it. I mean it's unnecessary code. So try seeing what does the end user see. So think about it and based on it design your exception handling. Exception handling in Spring MVC can be applied at two different levels. One is generally to all controllers. The other one is the controller specific exception handling. So let's start with that right now. So the way we implement exception handling in Spring MVC is quite simple actually. All that you need to do is you need to create a class. I mean you can call this class anything but make sure that there's a at controller advice on it. So when I say something is at controller advice it means whatever is in this code in this particular class is applicable to all the controllers. So whenever I say something is at controller advice it's basically an advice to all the controllers in that particular web application. So in the controller advice there are a lot of things that you can implement. Init binders for example. You can write an init binder in here and the binder would apply throughout the application. One of the things that you can also do is implement a exception handling in here. So when I add exception add uh, annotation at exception handler on the method and I'm saying value is equal to exception dot class so that almost covers everything then whenever an error occurs this method would be called. So you'd see that when I add an at exception hand when I add an exception controller with a at controller advice with at exception handler in here then you'd see that this would handle all the exceptions. So irrespective of which controller throws the exception we would always come back to here we can then log the exception and then we can go ahead and show a error page. So that's basically 
uh, overview of what we can do. Also, if I want specific exception handling in any controller, I can go ahead and add this in. So I can say at exception handler value is equal to the specific exception you want to catch in that particular controller and probably instead of sending it to the return error in that specific thing, you would send it to a return error specific. So let's play around with that very quickly right now. I'll quickly create a class. Now the class is ready. I created it in the package com in 28 minutes exception and I would want to add in the annotation at controller advice. So a controller advice basically now this whatever code which we write in here would be applied on top of all the controllers that we have. Right now we have two controllers right login actually three logout controller welcome controller and the to do controller as well. So let's go ahead and quickly write the exception handling method. So what we want to do is we want to do exception handle public string. I mean you can call this method anything we are going to add, use an annotation to identify it. So handle exception. You can add a lot of parameters to it but the important things for me are the request HTTP servlet request which is the request and I would want to get the exception details as well. So exception typically ex I guess. So let's start with that and the first thing I would want to do is to log that particular exception. For now I would use commons logging. So I'm saying logger logger is equal to log factory dot get log exception controller dot class. I'll import the log factory and also I'll import the commons logging log. So now I can go ahead and use the logger logger dot this is error. So I'll use this method logger dot error. I can pass in two arguments. One is the throwable. So here is your exception. So I'm passing the second argument exception in the first one can be any string message that you would want to identify. So some of the times what we would do is we would generate an ID for the exception and we would put that in so that you can use the ID and also show it to the user. That's one way you can have an ID which is shown to the user as well as it's in the log. For now let's keep it very simple. I would just say request. Um, I'd say request. I'll put the URL in. So request dot get URL through an exception. For now let's be happy with that. So let's do that and I would want to send the user back to an error page. So now we don't have an error page really yet configured. So let's go ahead and create an error page. Let's create one in here. Right click new JSP file error.jsp and I would have very similar content as in the other JSP. So all that we would have in here is I'm including the header navigation and I'm saying application has encountered an error. Please contact support on so and so. So that's very good. Now we have all the things that we would be needing to implement an exception handling. We need to throw an exception from somewhere. So what I'll do for now is in the show to do page, I'll throw a runtime exception. As you can see, this is the add to do method. So whenever I click the add to do method, whenever I send a get request to this, this gets fired up. So I'll comment the existing code in there. I mean, I didn't really want to spoil the whole thing out. So what we did now is three things. One is we created the exception controller at controller advice we forgot an important thing. We need to add an annotation on top of it so that this is recognized at as exception handler. So I would need to say at exception handler and what kind of exception does it handle? What kind of exception does it handle? We want it to handle everything. So I'll say exception dot class. Now we have uh, now I think we have a good running thing. Let's go ahead and launch our server up. Tomcat 7 run. Let's go ahead and launch it. I want to first make sure that it's in the log. It's captured. So I see exception hand, uh, handler being detected. So that's very good. I entered the username password logged in and I want to manage my to do's and to create the exception I click the add. Okay. So you can see that there's a custom error which is coming in. What you can do, actually do is you can play around with it. Actually you could have thrown an exception without having the exception controller in. So you can remove the annotation at controller advice at exception handler and see what would have been the result. You would not have got such a nice page. You would have got a 404 or something of that kind. So that's exception handling. Now this is how you implement exception handling. This is generic exception handling right now. I would want to add some specific exception handling in the to do controller itself. How do I do that? All that I need to do is copy this method into the to do controller and I would need to say at exception handler value is equal to specific exception dot class. I need the uh, logger as well. So let's go ahead and get it as well. So I'll put the logger in here 
and yeah that looks good through an exception and instead of sending it to the error page i can send it to error specific page so i can let's say there was something specific i want to show to the user when he's having an error on the to do then i can send him to error specific page i can do something of this kind and now i would obviously need to create the error specific page i want to change the error specific .jsp specific exception page now let's go ahead and let's go to home manage to do's and and now you see that the specific exception page is called basically we looked at two different things one is we created an exception controller which is generic so if you don't have specific exception handling for any of the controllers then this is what is used and we looked at creating a really specific exception handling for this particular scenario alone so in the to do controller alone i want to use have some specific exception handling then this is the way we do it exception handling in spring mvc is now very generic so now anywhere in the entire application let's say it's in the service layer or the data layer or anywhere the exception is thrown then user is shown the same page again and again you don't need to do exception handling anywhere in the application that is one of the fundamental reasons why spring has become so famous because now i don't need to do unnecessary exception handling in hundred of hundreds of places i mean when i look at a method earlier the try catch used to have like 15 20 lines and the actual logic of the method was three or four lines and it becomes very very difficult to maintain i have been in such a big messes a number of times and i hope you would not have to do anything of that kind have your exception handling code as much separate as possible and then you would not need to worry about exception handling a lot keep your exception handling as generic as needed unless there's a specific requirement the last thing we will not really demo this but this is something which would be very useful for you to know is whenever an exception is thrown in the jsp our entire exception piece of thing would not work so when the exceptions in the jsp happen whatever code which we wrote until now do not get fired so if you really want to handle such kind of errors as well then you can add this configuration into your web.xml so in the web.xml you can just go into the web.xml and add in a error page configuration not this this now is on top of whatever exception handling that we had configured so we have now ex advisor control advisor and on top of it there's an error.jsp if controller advisor does not handle it then all the errors would be going to the error.jsp page so that's all you need to know about exception handling with spring mvc in the next step let's look at how to internationalize our application i'm looking forward to seeing my application in french if you loved this video then i'm sure you'd love our course on spring mvc step by step on udemy too you should find a link to it along with the discount code in the description course would take you over setting up an application with spring mvc step by step in about 27 easy steps so all the code that we have is on the github repository and the code would take you through all the steps and explain you all the tips and tricks that you need to be able to use to develop an application using spring mvc good luck see you in the course